All right, good morning. You are listening to the Early Morning Skip, and thank you so much for coming through. And of course, uh, in the studio, we are joined by Dembele Kenny. Now, you are my man that needs no introduction. He was quite busy yesterday conversing about land and housing matters with my colleague uh, in Vaudia. But today, we want to talk about politics just briefly, but to the point, D. Good morning. Good morning, Kelvin. How are you? Welcome back to No More Life. <laughs> I've always been here. Eh? Right. I've made a lot of commentary. Uh, whilst I was there, so I regard I've never been gone. Actually. How easy has it been to communicate like that in prison? It uh, made me realize that uh, street life is the most important thing, and you need to be streetwise to get the message through and also to communicate because your formal system, uh, you'll always have to. Uh, we often, as activists, we spoke about uh, invented spaces in the created spaces. So we were in a created space, so we needed to invent our own space to communicate the message and the type of message that we wanted to communicate to society. That's right. So you are shut up in prison, and uh, um, a few weeks later, the movement that you founded, the mo- movement that you call lead, the affirmative repositioning, implodes at some point, and two members, we do not know whether they are axed, but measures are taken against them. How did you react from prison? I... Hardly slept that evening um, uh, when the story broke. I was trying to make sense of what was going to be um, happening. And also, the problem is you have limited resources to access this information. And the radio is your only uh, point of communication. So uh, we've we've listened to uh, what the colleagues have said. We've also listened to uh, what was said at the presser. And we were able to make uh, sense of uh, what was happening. So it it was a shock uh, because you wouldn't... Uh, really expect a movement such as ours to take drastic measures at this particular point in time because we've gone through a lot. We we have had activists who have done extremist of things, but we were able to find other mechanisms to deal with those matters without uh, relieving them of their duties or doing many of those things. And uh, as activists, it's, it's in our nature to question. It is in our nature to take one another to task. It is in our nature to guide one another. It is in our nature to speak to one another. So in the, 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 the actions that were taken, yes, perhaps they were, uh, they were necessitated by various issues that I am not aware of uh, or maybe have not uh, gotten a briefing of, but you must also understand that I'm not special <laughs> and decisions can be made around me. Uh, I am just an act- ordinary activist of the affirmative repositioning movement who believes strongly in the values and the fundamental. But, but equally, you are a founder of this movement that also disrupted the political scene. And when you reacted, uh, people interpreted to be part of the leadership reacting uh, uh, t- towards what's happening within the movement. And there was this feeling that you sounded disappointed in Job Ampanda. No, no, I'm, it's not a Job Ampanda decision um, because uh, I'm, I'm told and I'm briefed uh, that there is a body called the Interim National Activist Council, uh, a- INAC, and that, in, that interim committee took a decision of which uh, uh, activist Ampanda uh, is also part of. Uh, through the spokesperson, George Kambala, we, there were various uh, interviews that were done. Uh, I had an opportunity to, in fact, follow some of those interviews. And uh, if we, if there is a disappointment to, to be aired, it should be directed at the sitting of that particular meeting, of which was chaired by uh, activist Kananjebo. So, in other words, uh, I, I, as an ordinary activist of the affirmative repositioning movement, uh, and regard myself uh, not really as a founder, because remember, we, when we start building these titles around one another, it gives us an impression that we are more important than But others. is it not a reality to say you were the ones that created this movement? Of course, we were at the forefront of uh, uh, activist, uh, former spokesperson, says pioneering activist, uh, which I think is profound, and to say that as a pioneering activist of, of the movement, uh, those remember that activism was never birthed by us. Uh, we formalized uh, this struggle for land because it was scattered all over. And people were just making commentary around it. So we took a decisive trip when we were de- de- going to de- deliver some uh, books at Okule. And we had this lengthy discussion. And that is what brewed this, the eagerness for us to say enough is enough. Let's do something about it. But over the years, others have joined. Others, it attracted many and various activists. 
uh, of our country that just needed some sort of consolidation. So we needed to then collectively see how do we grow together and how do we make sure that we elevate in uh, this activist and how do we mold some? Because remember, at the age of 22, Kelvin, you are young, uh, you are full of energy and you hardly understand many of the dynamics that were happening. But what you knew, uh, because at the age of as young as 16, we had already been in the Swapo Youth League confronting the leaders in the Swapo Youth League and the Swapo in particular, addressing to issues of inequality and social justice. So we, this is not something new. We were young, yes, radical, even worse, but we needed to show some sort of um, maturity as you grow. Because remember, I'm 30 years old now. Eight years ago, yes, I was radical and I would say statements that left, right, center. But with maturity and the politics of maturity, you must be able to then say, this is what I can do. This is how I help this person. Not everything we need to do uh, is elevated to a level where we need to chase one another. That's right. There's, a, there's a strong feeling within some. And if you take a look at the letter that was written by your fellow comrades, that is uh, Pao Pao and uh, Simon Amunime, there's a strong feeling that uh, the likes of Job and Panda, Iuse Kester, these two councillors at the seat of Vindok, have managed to accumulate uh, so much as a result of being uh, leaders or being part to the affirmative repositioning in that you have been, you have taken a fall, that you, you, you have not been employed, you lost your job, and uh, whilst these have uh, seen this social upward mobility, positions, power, access to material resources, access to money, you haven't. Do you feel bitter about that? I can never be bitter on the decision that I've taken. In 2014, on the, in November, when we went to deliver books in uh, Okule, I took leave. And I took leave from my job. I was at the bank. Uh, if you add the eight years <laughs> that I've been in the bank, I would have been a manager by now. Right. Um, so I took leave. We, we came back. We went to Klenia Kupe to demonstrate what the anger around the young people. In fact, uh, the following, the week before that, uh, I, had, I was in housing care uh, in the Karas region campaigning for President Ginkop. Eh? Because remember, there was this huge feeling that the youth league didn't support the Swapo candidate right. at the time. So we went to and risk our life. I, I remember when we drove back, it was heavily raining. We needed to catch up for work. I arrived in Vinduk at 6 and at 7. I needed to be at the office and I was driving the whole night. So because we finished quite late in, in Oranjemund. So all that is part of the struggle and part of the activism. I remember when we when I took a decis decisive decision to say, look, uh, I can't, you know, lunch is one hour. And the, what the important thing about, or the interesting thing about corporate uh, is that they are punctual about time. So five minutes, you are late, you must work for it. So you'd always constantly have to work overtime, constantly have to make up for many of these things. So now your boss sees you today, and the next day you are in the front page threatening government. That's and right. he says, I, but this boy, anytime, any day, he can do that. So, so uh, you became a liability? Not, not necessarily. Right. So I took a decisive decision uh, to say, look, uh, I'm resigning from the bank. Uh, I need to grow this movement. But wasn't, wasn't your family disappointed? Don't they also have a sense of regret to say, how could you, we send you to school and then you become politically active and then you've lost out of these are, all the these opportunities are that you're supposed to be getting? No, no, no. These are right. sacrifices that every activist has, has to make. My mother left this country at the age of 13. I'm sure perhaps her parents would have been shocked to, under, to, to but understood the cause. But, but my, my, my father, right. uh, practically himself also, of course, he couldn't understand why I had to leave a formal job uh, into something that was not getting anything. So we, when, when, when I left the bank, uh, I took a decisive decision and I said, okay, this is a decision that I need to take uh, for the benefit of the greater of, the, of our country and the shaping of our politics in, in, in the nation. You must remember that there must always be a sacrificial lamp wherever we go. And, but, but can you say and, that and your colleagues have equally uh, sacrificed? I mean, the, the feeling that some have managed to accumulate. I, it, Job and Panda, for instance, is pocketing a lot of money. He traveled to Jamaica a few days ago. There's a lot of noise it, around the, 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 the <laughs> amount of money that was put in his pockets. It, and it, he's staying in a nicer part of town. Yes. I, I just want to, 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 to get a sense of how you feel about that. Kelvin, every, every man, and it's in the African culture, right. every man must find ways to fend and uh, ultimately uh, feed their family. 
of course we we don't make a lot of money uh, we're not wealthy uh, uh, of course uh, as a counselor you, you, you it's, a, it's a decisive decision to say do you say that you're not going to get a salary as a counselor or do you say that okay i'll get this salary and this is what i'll do with it so ultimately it should never be about what a person has accumulated uh, it's about what keeps you at night no do you go to bed happy do you go to bed uh, wondering about those things you must realize that uh, when you have a position of power a lot of doors open for you some good some bad right. and it depends on what your moral compass says so unfortunately i can't speak on behalf of others but what i can say for myself is that i don't regret the decisions that i've taken so when you came out of prison um There was a reception for you. Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters Leadership was there. Their president, Jan Epaphras Mukilongo, was there. And there was none from the affirmative repositioning. Of course, there was Simon Amnime. There was um, Powerless Powerless. But mm-hmm. these two action has been taken against them. Do you mm-hmm. feel like the movement is letting you down? Kelvin, uh, when, I, when I wake up every day right. and decide to challenge an issue, I don't challenge it because I'm an activist of the affirmative repositioning movement. I challenge it on the basis of fundamental social justice principles. If a person feels that uh, I'm not representing the affirmative repositioning movement and I don't in fact want because tomorrow they find me drunk and they say AR activist uh, what they say now AR founder drunk. So I I may just put the reputation and the image of the affirmative repositioning in disrepute because of my own action. So them being there or not being there does not necessarily matter because remember we when we challenge these particular things that we challenge in society and when we confront the inequalities and remember city of windhoek is part of the problem why we went to chinatown because chinese are operating without a uh, fitness certificates but black namibians when you are found without a fitness certificate they close you down instantly and we expect activists who are in leadership in position of influence and power to challenge some of these inequalities we expect activists to be the ones who are at the forefront challenging this high tax or increases in electricity at the city of windhoek because remember when we went to campaign in 2020 was to say that there is a previous dispensation of leaders who were letting the council and the residents of the city down so we now need to usher in new councillors who take decisive decisions who are with the people who are ground grounded with the ground and the masses of of our people because remember none of those that are in council today went to the uh, suburbs to say that we are going to bring you new tad roads they went to the informal settlements to say that we will bring you water sanitation and we also go there and bring you roads let's do an assessment a year and a half later what has happened in the informal settlement so it's it's a collective apportioning of blame if we need to do so on the collective failure of, of the leadership of the city of windhoek particularly in the political leadership because we have seen nothing but fights in the city of windhoek so we can't uh, the people are now saying no we must blame who we must blame who no no there are bylaws that they could sit there and say this bylaw does not work in our interest how do we do to repeal it how do we go around it people say the minister has a lot of power if the minister had a lot of power in this chaos the minister could have called all of them to order put to city of windhoek for example under um what is this thing they dismiss councillors and then people get under new caretaking for a specific period and we go back to elections because if people are unable to work together we must be able to find uh, solutions into and why it. is there a failure of finding each other the way you look at it is political interest is it financial interest of course we 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 are the position where uh, the city of windhoek uh, and is a capital city and people are unable to find their common interest remember our interest was when we campaigned right. was the masses of our people everybody you can do, do you feel that as as definitive repositioning of course you can talk about the collective of the city but mm-hmm. on your part Do you feel that we have failed our people? I mean taking a look at how you guys were robust about land we've delivery. Betrayed, we've betrayed the votes that we've gotten from our people, particularly the people in the in the in the Samora Marshall. I right. I was looking at the tally. I worked on the tally of the votes that we got. Samora Marshall, Tobias Ainyeko, Moses Garweb and Komasdal. So these four constituencies we've betrayed their trust because 
in the future for the best for Winduk in our manifesto, there were particular issues that we were addressing in as it relates to the local authorities and particularly in the informal settlements of those uh, in this locality. And we were unable up, up to, to now to address particular key issues of sanitation. There is about a hundred and something plus toilets that were donated through COVID. There were talks that they were going to be up already by last year. Up until date, we've not seen anything tangible. We've moved people who were in the um, pathways of the riverbed during the flood areas. We've dumped them somewhere in Samora Marshall there. To, the other day I was listening to Eagle and people were complaining that they don't have access to sanitation. The mayor says, who brought you here? All right. Because the, the new mayor did not know what was happening, but it's unfortunate because the new mayor was also a councillor and All right. we were part of that delegation. All right. You're reading a book here written by Tembeka Ngokaito with The Land is Ours, South Africa's First Black Lawyers and the Birth of Constitutionalism. I'm just done with this book. <laughs> I just finished it <laughs> yesterday, but uh, I'm just uh, putting that across because you are talking about matters to do with land. How is your relationship with Job and Panda? Have you talked ever since you left prison? Yes, we've spoken. Uh, my relationship uh, remains as it is. I mean, look... Uh, it must never be about what, whether D and Job speak, whether D and George speak, whether D and Pao Pao speak. Uh, it must be on matters of issues, you know. Uh, I'm, I'm now busy with the development because remember, uh, our vocabulary of land has disappeared as the affirmative repositioning movement, uh, particularly in the position of power and a position of influence. Why we fight? Why do activists fight in the first place? To, to enter the space of political power is so that they can advance what they were doing on the ground practically inside. So you've become so critical of the movement and, and honestly so. There's a feeling that you are aiming for political office. Not to say it's anything bad, <laughs> but that your ambitions now are set for the National <laughs> Assembly because the movement is not a political outfit. Uh, you have joined the Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters because... I don't have a membership of the right. Namibian Economic Freedom Fighters. So what's Fighters? your position? What's your relationship with them? Um, as an activist, my relationship with any other political formation remains solid. Right. As it lies to the fundamental aspirations of upkeeping and ensuring that we challenge social justice. Uh, and making sure that we are on the side of the poor and we are never uh, subjected to becoming petty bourgeoisies or quasi bourgeoisies or joining the bourgeois class. Because remember, we are in a class struggle. And in this class struggle that we are fighting, we must always find allies who are prepared to be on the side of the poor. So when you see me, I don't understand. I've been close to Kawandenge for a very long time. In fact, we were busy with a serious, serious program with the Nudo. And nobody said that... Uh, well, nobody saw you wearing a nude or regalia. But with NEFF, you've been seen wearing the red beret. The red beret has never had uh, any problems with, with in as far as we, 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 we come from. Remember, right. yeah. remember, I was with, the, I think, 2021. Uh, there's a photo of me with the, the deputy president of the EFF. Uh, nobody asked me what was that discussion about. So what's, <laughs> your, what, what's your political future? Come 2024, there's going to be a contestation. Are you going to be part of that contestation? Are you aiming to get in the National Assembly? I'm asking this question because more and more of young Namibians are entering politics and we are seeing them in the National Assembly being part and parcel of the dialogue to try to see if they can transform society. Are you looking at that? Kelvin, since... Uh we founded the affirmative repositioning movement. I've never been a person who's interested in position. Um, I've served where I could. I've given the best way I can. And I've always ensured that uh, there are more young people who must learn from what we do and more young people must grow from what we do. And 2024, come 2024, we must make sure that there's a lot of young people who must enter politics. I'm impressed particularly by some of these young people that have gone to parliament. Not... Uh, uh, bulldoze to parliament. You actually wrote to Idipo Amata when he... Yes, exactly, because they, they fought a decent fight. Part of those beneficiaries are young people who neglected the fight, but benefited at the end of the day, and that was the essence of my letter, and that we must support those young people who want to contest and be in the National Assembly. I will be ready to support and campaign for bright young people, and not these uh, young people who join the bourgeois class after entering the aspects of um, positions of power and position of, uh, of, of, of amassing wealth. And we forget uh, what our role is. Remember, 
uh, the is a saying that to fight for the poor it doesn't necessarily mean that you need to be poor. Let's get that thing wrong out of our heads because it's wrong. Because how do I fight for you when I can't fight for myself? How do I convince you that I can fight for you when when I must fight? <laughs> you know, I must keep you away from my pocket. So I must make sure that one hand is bringing you up and another hand must be protecting what is in my pocket. Because ultimately, if I allow all of you to enter my pocket, I become like you. So who fights for who now? So we. We must be able to fight, find genuinely in young people who are prepared to fight. So in, as it relates to politics, I'm, I'm really just at the stage where I feel it is important that I take care of my family. I've been to prison for, over a hand, uh, for about 100 days. I know what prison for 100 days can do to a family. So I must make, up, make time for my children, my mother, my father, my beautiful girlfriend, and make sure that ultimately I provide a life that is decent for them because nobody else is going to do it. That's right. And once we miss that point, uh, when I die, they will come and I only have uh, a torn bed and three socks and uh, a pair of broken jeans. Like Thomas Sankara. Yes, then they say, oh, this is the leader who was fighting for you. Look how he died. <laughs> so right. we must make sure that we, we, we position ourselves properly as young people and we fight the genuine economic emancipation in our lifetime. Right. And we must realize it, not just by speaking about it tangibly. So I don't blame the young people uh, who have joined the politics of power and are, are trying to amass as much wealth as they can for their families and themselves to sustain themselves. Because it's a long fight. And uh, we just hope that it's being done in the correct manner. So yes, we must. Uh, we've joined the young people in business to try and deliver housing for our people and not on a commercial uh, level because remember we must always be guided by revolutionary morality and nowhere does it say that we must be poor and uh, no, I, I'm yet to and I think it's a very interesting trajectory you have joined the corporate world I mean from that side where you're pushing this I'd like to see how you are going to merge your leftist socialist principles with uh, the business ideas of a very capitalist system because you, you are in the purchasing of land. And uh, it'll be very interesting to see how you're going to be um, uh, balancing it, the two. It, it's really just in the financing. Because right. remember, uh, housing finance traditionally requires you to go to a bank. And the banks are the ones who are milking our people that come from the capitalist system. Now we are saying, let's use a socialist leftist agenda in ensuring that we don't enslave people in mortgages and make sure that people are able to at least live. Remember, we now live in these flats where we are, and we are dying. We are not living. You go to a young person who lives in Kleine Kupe, they only have water and, and onion in their fridge. But what we are simply saying is, let the young person be able to have a decent home, have food, have a chairs, not these plastic ones in the sitting room, and be able to make a living for themselves. That's right. That is Adembele Kenny. Now, you're my the first time that I speak with him right here on the program after he left prison right here in the studio. Unfortunately, he doesn't have much time. He has to rush to the next uh, port of call where he's supposed to be. Adembele Kenny, I really appreciate you taking this interview and taking some of the nasty questions that I was throwing <laughs> away. No, there's no nasty question. I think uh, we must be able to, to be honest to, to our people because Amikar Cabral tells us that uh, hide nothing from the masses of our people and mask uh, all untruths and we must be able to face this, some of these things, uh, difficult questions with honesty so that uh, at least our people see who we are for who we are and not really fool people for other things. That's right. You could just listen to the early morning scoop right here on Eagle FM.